Hey you! Yes you! Welcome to the Youth for Change. My name is Shafi. My name is Muhammad. And this is Youth for Change where we meet and greet young change makers in the community. For today's episode, we're gonna interview two change makers. We're gonna play a lot of games, activities, and also ask them a lot of questions. So let's go! So my name is Liz and uh, I'm Shirin and we are both the co-founders of Wild Art. So what we do at Wild Art is basically we make plant-based watercolours and also we run some nature, nature art experiences. This is Liz, Shirin, sorry Shirin, Liz. <laughs> I wanted it to be quite ambiguous. So some people say it looks like an animal footprint. Uh, yeah. Some people say it looks a bit like a tulip. So I like the ambiguousness and then it keeps people thinking. And then the overall shape is organic. It's not a perfect circle. So it gives a little bit more natural feel to it. The word wild is quite literal, obviously, about nature, about plants, about animals. And dot um, is just to represent Singapore. You know, how Singapore is a small dot. If you want to go in a very artistic sense, most artists start by putting a dot in their paper and start going. As we know, like most of our paints are very commercial. Some of them can be a little bit toxic, you know, made of metal. But it's just that we feel that it's also important that people learn the whole process of paint making, or natural paint making. It also gets people to learn more about the plant itself, because it's whole circular process of that. Oh, okay, so I have this plant, then oh, it gives this in. For us, we try to grow some of our own plants. So we also have this like whole process, and then we get to know the plant more, lah, because every plant taking care of it is very different. I think that's unique here, lah, because they are trying to explore what the plants and the colours that they bring forth in this region. We want to find out more on how you come about with this idea. And I think let's start with the process, shall we? Yeah, of course, yeah. All right, what do we have here? Okay, so we got a lot of uh, little rocks uh -huh. that we've collected around the neighbourhoods in Singapore. Also, we have different sorts of plant materials that we use for ink making as well. This one over here is the bark of the yellow flame tree. This one is the blue pea flower. Like you know all those food colouring dyes that you see online? This is the plant that is responsible for the beautiful blue colours that people get. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and we grow some of them on our garden as well. They grow and they bloom very fast. So we can get a lot of flowers just from a few of the plants. And this one over here is the anato seed. So this one, they use it for spice making. This one, y'all can try. Not eat, but you can smell it. All these little rocks that we found. In Southeast Asia, our soil is very high in iron oxide. And this is why there's a lot of ochre pigments. So ochres, they can range from reds to yellows to browns and you can find a variety of different colours. Sometimes we just depend on whatever colour you want. Like you see in this container here, we have some that's darker red and yellowy orange rocks. So if you would like to, what you can do is try to grind a small rock into the small pigment form. Uh, and then after you need to mix it with the different binders that we have. Alright, it's artsy fatsy time! Boop, boop, boop. So I think we are doing a bit of painting. But I think before we do that, we want to know more about the uh, things that we're using. Okay, so here we've got the blue pea ink that was made from the blue pea flowers that we saw just now. And this is uh, mahogany ink that was also from the mahogany off-cut wood chips that we got from a local carpenter. So these are plant-based pigments and some of them, they are also reactive to different pH changes. So you all know pH like the acid versus alkali, right? So you got the citric acid. Citric acid is what you will find in lemons. And baking soda, which you will find at home, this is alkaline and this is acidic. So as you paint with these pigments, maybe you can try and see like, whether they're So any, we can like, do the salt bay thing, is it? Uh, you can do it, yeah, exactly. So Just feel free to experiment yeah. with that. What I like to I teach in my classes is usually that it's okay to paint whatever you want. Most of all, it's the whole like wellness and being. La. So a good way to start is like if you ever want to draw figures or shapes, always make it um, simple. Like you know, imagine like Lego. How do you form a cat shape or Lego? Yeah. We hope to eventually create a community of like artists and nature explorers as well. Hopefully, in the future, make a uh, sort of exhibition. La. So, you know, maybe those who enjoy hiking or like teaching mm -hmm. others about plants bring artists into different areas of Singapore, learn about plants. Um, then, maybe these artists who are inspired, maybe they can create artworks and hold an exhibition. In terms of help to um, promote more about the greenery we have in Singapore, it's nice to have a community where everyone is very excited, learn about plants, and like, share things together. Yeah. We hope maybe more artists would 
find like plant pigments interesting and hopefully they will make more artworks with it. This is my art. I called it Shahira. Why? Because it's the name of the person holding the camera right now. Hi there. So, mine is full of very complex shapes. It's just full of very simple abstract stuff. It helps unclutter my mind at times. Mine was just whatever came to my mind. <laughs> it's just all free flow shapes, like all these circles and loops. So I find that whenever I pick up a brush, especially with this kind of large brushes, I tend to like making this sort of patterns and just draw it around without really leaving the paper. So yeah, this was what I felt like today. My painting, I name it Safi the Croso the Cutter the Nasi Lemak. But I think uh, it, it speaks about how we view the world. So we always stay in a box, right? but when we explore out of the box, we will see you know, very beautiful things. But I think I'm struck by how uh, we only use two colours, brown and the indigo, but when we add the citric acid and the asam powder, no, what is this? The baking soda, it changes the colour. Yeah. Yeah, so, yeah, thank you guys. I think yeah, it's, it's very life changing. Alright, man, so what do you learn today, man? I learned that you don't need to spend a lot of money to have fun. You yes. just need to know where to look. Mm -hmm. What about you? Well, uh, mine is as simple as the nature is your figure. So guys, we'll see you in our next episode of You, you For Change!